Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's for this time of morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 73. Truly God is good to the upright, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant, I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pain, their bodies are sound and sleek. They are not in trouble as others are, they are not plagued like other people. Therefore pride is their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes swell out with fatness. Their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice. Loftily they threaten oppression. They set their mouths against heaven and their tongues range over the earth. Therefore the people turn and praise them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is their knowledge in the Most High? Such are the wicked, always at ease. They increase in riches. All in vain I have kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and am punished every morning. If I had said I will talk on this in this way, I would have been untrue to the circle of your children. But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I perceived their end. Truly you set them in slippery places, you make them fall to ruin. How they are destroyed in a moment, swept away utterly by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes, on awaking you despise their phantoms. When my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart, I was stupid and arrogant. I was like a brute beast towards you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will receive me with honour. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion for ever. Indeed, those who are far from you will perish. You put an end to those who are false to you. But for me it is good to be near God, for I have made the Lord God my refuge to tell of all your works. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. 
Amen. Our first reading from the Old Testament is taken from the book of Judges, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Now Abimelech, son of Jerubal, went to Shechem to his mother's kinsfolk and said to them and to the whole clan of his mother's family, Say in the hearing of all the lords of Shechem, which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jerubal rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. So his mother's kinsfolk spoke all these words on his behalf in the hearing of all the laws of Shechem, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. They gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the temple of Baal Berith, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. He went to his father's house at Opera and killed his brothers, the sons of Jeroboam, seventy men on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, survived, for he hid himself. Then all the lords of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pear, pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim, and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you lords of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. The olive tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my rich oil, by which gods and mortals are honoured, and go to sway over the trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my sweetness and my delicious fruit and go to sway over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I stop producing my wine that cheers gods and mortals and go to sway over the trees? So all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you acted in good faith and honour when you made Abimelech king, and if you had dealt well with Jerubal and his house, and have done to him as his actions deserved, for my father fought for you, and risked his life and rescued you from the hand of Midian. But you have risen up against my father's house this day and have killed his sons, 70 men on one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his slave woman, king over the lords of Shechem, because he is your kinsman. If I say you have acted in good faith and honour towards Jerubal and towards his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the lords of Shechem and Beth Milo. And let fire come out of the lords of Shechem and Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. Then Jotham ran away and fled, going to Beer, where he remained for fear of his brother Abimelech. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that he may walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, 
chapter 15, beginning at verse 11. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country. and There he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. And when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. While he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and he put his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get and kill the fatted calf and let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his eldest son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And so he called one of the servants and asked what was going on. Your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, For all these years, I have been working like a servant for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have not even given me a young goat so that I may celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then his father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But it is right to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is now found. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. So let us pray. that this day may be holy, good, and joyful. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may offer to you our worship and our work. 
we pray to you, O Lord, that we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray to you, O Lord, that in the pleasures and pains of life we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, in trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. And so let us commend ourselves and for all whom we pray this day to the mercy and protection of God. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who wait. Who wait not knowing. Who wait with anxiety, uncertainty and fear. Father, for many people today will be a day when news will break their hearts and the hearts of their loved ones. A day when they will feel alone or without hope. And yet, Lord, we know that they are not alone, that you are there alongside them, holding them with unseen hands. Each one of us, Lord, faces a river at some point in our lives, whether it be for ourselves or for someone we care for. And so we pray for our families and our friends. We pray, Lord, for those here at St. Mary's and St. James, for those who are facing the reality of a broken heart or spirit today. Father, your word tells us that when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. For those we know and for those we don't, Please, Lord, be a sure defence and a strong right hand in the face of all trouble and adversity. Reveal your comfort and your peace to those who need it. For those who will wake to loss or grief. To those who will wake and wish they hadn't. For those who wake hoping for a new start. Holy Father, help us to develop our spiritual lives so that we may sense deep your security no matter what is around the corner. Give us your grace to trust in your unfailing and unending love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.